can never really find a good sound effect of a guy getting hit in the head with a shovel. Good evening, sir. May I interest you in our soup de jour? Shut the fuck up, you goddamn fuckhole! You piece of shit! Dude, we didn't even tell anyone that uh, Larry the Cable Guy was here. Yeah, I know. How could you guys not promote that? He's not. I think, arenas. I think he's the biggest star we've had on XM Satellite Radio since getting here. There he is. You are the biggest star we've had on XM Satellite Radio thus far. Good Lord. You, Larry the Cable hurt. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hurt. If I'm the biggest star you ever had on here, there's something wrong. <laughs> Good Lord. What's going on, fellas? Hey, you, Hanging. You, you, didn't, you didn't call us yesterday from a truck, did you? Uh, no, I don't think right. I did. <laughs> it's the same voice we heard yesterday on the phone. Sounded like it. I got a truck, but I don't think I called you from it. Uh, Larry, I, we got to tell you, we're, um, we're, we're new to talking to the whole country. Like, right. we were syndicated on regular radio on the East Coast, and a few, basically we were syndicated to the blue states, okay? And now we're syndicated to uh, the entire country, and we're trying to... We're trying to get used to the uh, the southern voice and the truckers and all that. Yeah, you know what? It takes it's kind of foreign to us. It takes a while to get used to. Now, I got a buddy of mine don't even move his lips when he talks. <laughs> and you're always like, hey, you want to go up to the store? He's like, no, I don't I'm like, what the hell? My dad heard that. He was laughing. I'd done that joke one time. My dad thinks that's there. He'd come up to me. He's like, man, <laughs> Jimmy Norton, good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Good Lord, he's a funny. You got screwed on that damn what the last comic standing? Last comic standing. We was watching that. Ah, uh, they were okay. I, you know what? I had an MTV contract, and I kind of I signed already. So NBC was cool. We kind of knew that was happening. Well, awesome. I, I always thought it should have been because it, you know, that's so political that shit. Because I'm watching. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, they got the black guy. They got the white guy. They got the Oriental guy. They got the you know that should have been. They should have changed the name to Last Demographic Standing. That's what they should have <laughs> changed it to. You know, if you're a white guy on there, you ain't got a chance. <laughs> no, you're right, and uh, I don't think I would have went very far. I probably would have got booted the first or second round. Cause... Thank God you didn't have a retard on there. You know you'd have been beat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, his name is Rich Voss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Voss, he's funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> met him before. He's, he's funny. funny. <laughs> I, yeah, but, I can't get used to the accent ever, man. Yeah, we got a lot of truckers that call up now. A lot of truckers, and... They love to talk. Boy, I tell you what, those, uh, hey, I'll tell you what, they got them satellite radios, they too. Sure they sure do. They got That's why we're trying to be oh, really yeah. nice to the truckers. Oh, the truckers are good folks, I'll tell you what. But they don't shut up. They <laughs> just keep going. You, you know, you figure, get, get what you got to say out, and then it always ends with, all right, thanks, guys, one more thing. Yeah. Oh, here they're he kind goes. of lonely out there. It ain't got much. Else they're just lonely to... and they want to talk. Hey, I went on. I forget what I did, but I was I did some interview somewhere, but they were syndicated their show on XM, and uh, I think it was the Trucking Bozo. He's on XM. Oh, right. oh we yeah, heard about yeah. that guy. Yes, we did. And he's great. I love the Trucking Bozo. I go on Trucking Bozo. I'm supposed to do like 20 minutes with him. I end up staying with the guy. He, I went to the studio at like midnight, you know. I end up staying with him until 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I did a show in Dayton, Ohio. The next night, seven big rigs showed up. They were in the area, and they heard it, and seven big rigs showed up to the show, just wow. parked out there in the parking lot. <laughs> Fucked it up so no one else could park. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There, there was, was seven only... people in the yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah, there was only seven people, but them truckers had a good time. They had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Did you do any hunting? I see you got the camo on. You know on what? There. I went bird hunting a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't get nothing. No? no? I don't think I'm throwing the dogs up high enough. <laughs> but uh, I got in trouble in Montana. I shot an elk. Yeah, at the Elks Lodge, <laughs> and uh, they didn't take right to that either. So, <laughs> gotta watch out for those Asians now when you're hunting. Oh my God, that you... guy up there, uh, the Asian guy in Wisconsin that uh, took out six hunters. Yeah, you believe that? Mm, yeah, no. seems there was a. Who knew there was a problem up there? <laughs> they had some Asian hunter like battle that's been going on for uh, years apparently. Well, that's great. Well, I guess that, that happened six miles from my girlfriend's yeah. hometown. And she was kind of scared because her brother, her dad, and five of their buddies all went to their private land hunting camp up there. And I called her and I said, hey, did you hear about it? And she goes, no way. So she hung up real quick, called, make sure everything was fine. But, I mean, that's crazy. A bunch of good old boys get jumped by uh, an Asian, one Asian guy. Well, look, next time you're going through the woods and you see an Asian guy in a deer stand wearing 
the wrong kind of camo and a SKS assault rifle, <laughs> get the hell out of there. The only thing an Asian should be doing in the woods is massaging you and jerking you off <laughs> <laughs> behind a tree. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> I got no problems with Larry's that. Larry's with you, Jim. He's with you. <laughs> <laughs> I went up there for Thanksgiving, and uh, by the way, I ate too much. I'm starting to have to buy relaxed fit condoms. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm gaining it in the right places, right? But I go up there, and my sister-in-law's up there, and she just got all them piercings down, you know, yeah. in the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And y'all can tell when she's coming, you know, because she always wears a skirt. She's got a, it sounds like a wind chime headed <laughs> your way. But she got a damn bolt in her, you know, and she's showing people at the damn Thanksgiving. She's walking around, hey, check this out, you rip her britches. And I'm like, well, man, pull your pants up. It looks like a BB stuck in a taffy puller. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> That's ruining my damn dinner right there. It's insane. <laughs> but I don't know if any of them truckers, if you're down through uh, southern Alabama, I forget what town I was going through, but I was on my way home one time, and this true story, I come across a school called Hank Williams Junior High School. <laughs> and i got to thinking is that hank williams junior high school yeah. or hank williams junior high school? high school so i was talking to some people it doesn't matter nobody graduated from either one of them <laughs> so i guess it was no big deal you got a lot of fans calling in already oh uh, i tell you what i love uh i love uh, xm i love satellite I, them truckers i love them to death i'll tell you i wanted to be when i was a kid i grew up on a pig farm mm-hmm in, believe it or not, southeast point. Nebraska. But I moved to Florida way back in 70, back when I was 15. That's where I picked all my accent up and everything. Oh, if you've ever been to Florida, people go, Florida? Don't got, well, oh, yeah, you they go, do. You go to Central Florida, North Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you they got, got something it. going on. It's just so southern that's Georgia. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to be a, I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to drive a, a damn cattle truck. I wanted to drive a pot a belly cattle cattle. truck. I wanted to drive a pot belly cattle truck when I was a kid. The stinkiest trucks on the road. Oh, I love it, love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Let's say hi to Mike in um, Pig farm. <laughs> uh, Mike in Oklahoma City. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's going on there, M80 hair, Wrangler, Bart Tent Lips? All right, wait, that's uh, Ben. <laughs> Who's Wrangler is uh, Ant, and I'm Bird Vag Lips? Yeah. All right. Oh, not bad. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> old big old Larry Cable Guy, we're out here getting it done in a cattle truck. What's up, Bubba? Hey, are you at, Bubba? Get it in. Oh, hey. You're good. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. One, when are you supposed to get down here to Oklahoma City again? I'm in Oklahoma City, I believe, in January. Oh, you what, down there at, uh, oh, hell, I can't think of the name of that club down in Bricktown. No, I'm at the theater there. I'm at the arena, the Coliseum. Yeah, he's playing oh, arenas now, bro. Yeah, I'll be at the Coliseum. They don't play I, clubs anymore. I just had a question for you. On the uh, TV show that y'all got with Foxworthy and uh and, and Wall, Yes, sir. And uh, I apologize about that he, for being funnier than them two guys. What's that? <laughs> the question I had uh, is that uh, skit y'all did about uh, the chewed up pre-chewed food or whatever. Yes, sir. Who the hell's idea was that? That but, fucking gross. Oh, you got to explain. I saw, that was that was hilarious, actually. Oh, you got to explain it for the people that didn't see well, it. Well, I'm going to tell you. They did a sketch, and I was gone that day, uh, and I came back, and they were showing some of the sketches that, they, that they'd done, and they ran that one back, and I was like, man, that's kind of gross. What it is is pre-chewed food was a sketch they did where oh, no. the sketch was, yeah, are you yeah. taking too much time eating your food? Well, our creator's here, and it just shows this factory line of people chewing food and spitting it in the glasses, and then they package it. So you ain't got to oh, chew man. the food, and you suck it through a straw. And so they're going, you get apple pie, and it, it looks like vomit that they're pouring out. That and was I, the bad part about it, because I was sitting there eating some of my wife's spaghetti and meatballs, and <laughs> just about lost it right there. Well, on the well I got to tell you, I said, and you can ask my buddy that's with me, I said, look, that's too gross. We cannot air it. I think that's too gross to air. And so what we did was we ran it back for the crowd, and Jeff goes, well, I'm going to ask the crowd. And he goes, listen, here's a bit we did. It's up to the audience. If you think we should air it, then you'd let us know. And they said, air it, air it. Of course. Of course, it was all a bunch of college kids. They yeah, don't, yeah. They don't shit. I think we should do that on the show the for a my fight. I got one more oh. super quick question for uh, Larry. Then I'll you guys are never quick out. in Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah. Who are you kidding? Yeah, hey, you know what? You know what Tulsa spelled backward is? <laughs> Asshole. No, a slut. 
<laughs> you know, you know what, you know what, a, you know what a slut backward is. Hundred dollars. <laughs> hey, Larry, uh, you know what noodling is, right? A uh, noodling? Yeah. Yes, sir. What is okay. it? Okay, explain it to them guys. I'm out. You guys have a good day. All right, thank you. No- what, is, what is what is that? Well, from what I understand, noodling. Uh, I think noodling isn't noodling sticking your tongue in the butthole or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm I. Not sure, that's what Jim. I, that's what I thought it was. Jim, no, you're an expert on that. No, I would call that dinner prep. No, I think noodling uh, is uh, drunk sex. No, I don't know. See, I've, I've heard never heard the term. I never did. It. See, now I thought that was tossing salads, but sorry, right. I, I, I've salad. heard the tossing the salad. Somebody salads, told then. me it was noodling. I know there's different terms for different things all across, yeah. but that's what I heard it was. I'm probably dead wrong on that. But. All right. Eating ass. Uh, Tim in Jersey. Tim, what's up? Hey, what's going on? We're Good hanging thing. with Larry the Cable Guy. He's doing the Foxwor- uh, Foxworthy roast tonight. Yep. Oh, excellent. Hammerstein Ballroom. Do- Larry, can you do a couple analogies? I heard them the other day, and I was laughing my balls off. Oh, yeah, sure. I was uh, uh, more frustrated and a pervert with palsy trying to draw a vagina on an etch a sketch <laughs> Matter than Jesse Jackson at the airport having to answer the white courtesy phone. <laughs> Tripping and stumbling like Ray Charles walking through a pumpkin patch. <laughs> <laughs> I was going down like Barney Frank in a cheap motel. <laughs> ah, I like that. <laughs> Matter in a legless Ethiopian watching a donut roll down a hill. <laughs> A lot of them. Uh, hey, Matter an Amish electrician. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Now the truckers are coming out of the woodwork. Oh, I here. love the truckers. Roy, what's up? You know what uh, noodling is? Yeah, it's where you go uh, catfishing with uh, with your hands. You catch them with your hands. Oh, see, I thought he was being dirty. See, that, yeah. Well, when it, it well, we used to go to Nemaha River, and we used to go down there and punch them. You go down there and you and those big catfish. Now, now tell me if you've heard of this. What's his name? Uh, Roy. 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 Yeah. Now that new. That's when you go down in the river and you punch your hand in the, in the catfish mouth and bring up the catfish. Is that not noodling? Uh, I don't know if it's legal or not. I guess in some places it's not legal, but. It doesn't matter if it's legal. Is that what uh, noodling is? Where you punch the yeah, catfish? Yeah, that's what noodling is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, they build these boxes and sink them down in the river, and I guess the catfish is laying in them boxes and wait for food to come to them. Well, then the, these guys go back to those boxes, stick their hand in there, and catch the catfish. Yeah, but that, huh. that we just called that punching catfish. Just punching catfish. <laughs> See, I had heard that noodling was leaking some Don't girl need a name for That's it. I heard it was. <laughs> Well, that's Do a little noodling and then go out and punch some catfish. But... Maybe it's licking a catfish in butt. I was going to say, that's a lot different than licking ass. I got I got both of them mixed up. Yeah, that's a lot different than licking ass. <laughs> Playing with an ass, punching a catfish, it doesn't matter. Your fingers smell the same. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. Either way, it looks like you got out of the WNBA locker room. <laughs> oh, good Lord. We just had some trouble here recently. Uh, uh, my neighbor come over. He's all upset. Apparently, his uh, uh, nephew just got kicked out of school down there in Florida yeah. for having sex with his tenth grade teacher. Uh-huh. And the funny part is, he's homeschooled. So we were all upset about it. <laughs> A little I, upset about I that. Huh? <laughs> uh, Vanilla Thunder from Philly. What's hey, up, I, Vanilla I, Thunder? What's up, man? I, for a my fly, I'd go to a Larry the Cable Guy concert in blackface. Oh, <laughs> that would be a little rough. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do uh, that for? All right. Well, anyway. Is it all rednecks at your, uh, Hell your shows, no. Larry? You know what? That's a misconception. That's why I'm asking. There are all kinds of, and I'm going to tell you what, I, uh, the black crowds yeah. laugh there. I went on Steve Harvey's show yeah. in, in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And we had the best damn time because I do good. But you know, let me the black tell you guys really acknowledge that Steve Harvey is black. Well, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I have, and it's you know, and I have all different kinds of crowds that come to my mm-hmm. show. And just because I talk this way, don't mean it's just all rednecks coming to my show. I mean, it's everybody. And I tell everybody the worst crowds to perform for, and Jim Norton will tell you this too. I like 
I don't care who's coming to my show as long as you like to laugh. But the ones that are the most uptight are those real rich white liberals. Absolutely. Yeah. And they have to analyze every joke before they can laugh at it. They're the first. That's what I always say about that. Like, I'll do a joke. Like, some, I'm on stage. Every now and then, my shadow will be behind me. And I'll go, so then I was, and I act like I'm scared, and I look, and I go, oh, good Lord, I thought a black guy was sneaking up behind me. <laughs> right? And, and people, laugh, and you know what? And I do that because... It, uh, the black crowd loves that. I think yeah. it's the funniest damn thing they ever heard. But you look at these uptight white people. They have to look around to see who's laughing at yep. it. And they just piss me off. And those are the same people that will come up to you, that was a racist joke. And then they'll get in their car, and they're the first one to lock their door when they go down a bad part of town. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, well, they have some sense. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they're but afraid they're, that laughing is like a win Because they, they really are real condescending, paternalist, uh, uh, racist. And they're afraid that by laughing, that's an acknowledgement of like, oh, yeah, I really do feel that way. Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Mm -hmm. It's insane. But, no, I, lo I love all my crowds. Whoever comes to see my show, they're just going to laugh. We're all going to have a good time and forget about Early it. Early on, it must have been a lot of just rednecks and small clubs, though. Uh, well, you know, I built my following on radio. I, I used to do very politically incorrect social commentaries. Right. And, I mean, I would just say, it, hey, this is, because I'm not, I've, I deem myself as a regular dude. I'm just, you know, I go home, and I do like, you know, I'm riding a horse, I'm four-wheeling, I'm going down to Hooters, I'm hanging out with my buddies, or shooting pool. I mean, I'm just a regular guy like they are, so... When it comes to politics and stuff, I'll just say it the way I feel it. You know, uh -huh. I like it and kiss my ass. You know, That's I mean, it. but the main part of it is you want to be funny. You're yep. a comedian, so oh, you yeah. just try to. Be. It's like when I tell everybody, it's like Bill Hicks was a buddy of mine. He used Love to, he Bill. Used He's to my date, favorite, by the way. He used to of date time. my ex manager, uh, Colleen. And, uh, but I didn't agree with one thing. I'm pretty right wing. Right. But I didn't agree with anything he said yeah, he religiously was pretty out or there politically. Left. But I went to see Bill Hicks because he made me damn laugh. Yeah, the guy was freaking funny. funny. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Exactly. And, and that's what I tell everybody. And that people go to a show and they'll be pissed off. Go, what, what the hell are you go to a Bill yep. Hicks show for? Right, you right. Know? People are just insane. They'll go he, see stuff. His that comedy was off. brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, yeah. He was he was insanely funny. You know, I mean, he would take his time on that stage, and uh, there would be silence because people were just listening. Yeah. But, you know? Uh, there's a, you guys know when you do a comedy show, about, there's a lot of up, uptight people in the audience. They need to laugh every two minutes, you know? Yeah, people got to realize they're at a comedy club, you yeah. know, and that's the one place you can go set aside all your problems and, and have a good time. But, but yeah, them, them politically uptight white crowd piss me off. but. Well, but but, but uh, majority of them are real good. Audiences yeah. seem to think now, and, and this is the part of the problem, that they're part of the creative process, and they have to agree with your ideology to laugh at it. And it just it makes you want to bite somebody's face. Like I don't agree with anything Paul Mooney says, but I'll still laugh watching him because he's a good comic. Man, he's the biggest racist. We, fine, let him be. Uh, I mean, as long as he's funny, I don't care. You know what I mean? He, I'm with remember you. we interviewed we yeah. interviewed Paul Mooney, man. I thought we were going to get killed. There's some people, yeah, I get pissed off that I am laughing because it's like, God, I hate what this guy's saying. But, but it's funny. It's so funny that I can't stand him. That, that's <laughs> alternative comics. This is the problem with alternative comics. They don't have the gift necessary to make their political opinions funny. So they're like, well, we're just doing something different because they're not talented enough to make it. Look, at how, how funny is Mark Maron? I don't agree with anything he says. Right. But he's a funny guy. He's a good comic. Mm. Are you talking about Janine Garofalo, too? <laughs> oh, she's super. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, she's oh. super. As soon as he said that, I'm like, Dang. he's talking about Janine Garofalo. Oh, no, with, she's super. Man. With her <laughs> stupid notebook, making believe she's just trying out material. Dude, too you cool don't get the it. Room. Uh, the Dude, movie she... Roots is funnier than her. <laughs> 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 the, the, the movie you mean Roots? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> you should never let the black girl turn around when she gets your water for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not big fans of Janine Garofalo on this show. Yeah. See, we did, she did the first uh, episode of Tough Crowd. With, 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 it was eight test episodes we got, and she hated my guts. Of course she did. So I did a Coyote's age did. joke, and from there on in, it was just brutal. Yeah. You know, I will say this about her, though, and that's why, you know, I never thought she's funny, but you got to see, she gets her crowd. Yep. I mean, she's found her audience. That's what you got to do as a comedian is find your audience, and they go and they go by 1,500 a night, yep. 2,000 a night, and they laugh. And, and you don't know there. what the hell they're <laughs> laughing at, but they're laughing. They don't either. They're just like, wow, she's brilliant. It's just kind of being channeled through her. And they hand yeah. out free flannel after the show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not one dick in that audience. No. <laughs> and a free haircut. Tim in uh, Wisconsin, uh, another trucker. What's up, Tim? Hey, not bad. How's it going, on eh? We're hanging with Larry the Cable Guy. Larry. Yes, sir. Hey, get her done. Get her done. 
Hey, what I want to know is, was your wife from Birchwood or Exland? No, it's not my wife. It's my girlfriend. She was actually from a little town called Spooner. Oh, yeah. You know where that is. The Spooner Rails. Yeah, Spooner. That's where she... Yeah, the rails. I think your grandpa owns the whole town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh... It's like a foreign language when these two are talking. Well, have you ever been to Spooner? Hell no. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't take enough film for that trip. <laughs> I tell you what, though, Wisconsin is one of the most beautiful states in the country. Yep. If you ever get a chance to go up there, I don't think I will. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't it, think I'll ever get the chance. Oh, it's nice. It's colder than a witch's tit, though, this morning up here. Yeah. Nine yeah. degrees we got right now. Hey, Ben, why don't you run over there and open all the bathroom windows there in Wisconsin? <laughs> there you have it. All Some right, freak. And those witches' tits, they get real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I was up, just grab one. Yeah, what yeah. does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Nobody's been saying that for years. I know, but what does it mean? I've never even seen a witch's tit. <laughs> to tell. I remember we went up there. Uh, I got a rent a car up there in uh, Wisconsin. And, and uh, by the way, if you ever get a rent a car and you want to cheat on the mileage, Mm-hmm. Don't use white out. They figured that out. All right. <laughs> they got that shit figured out. But I got one of those rent cars. It had a voice. I don't know if you've ever seen this, uh, Jim, if you get rent cars, but it had a voice activated radio, one of those new radios. Like if you want to hear country music, you just sit there and you go, country music. And it'll come on. And then you go, like, rock and roll. And it'll come on. So I want to hear some country music. And I was about to say country. Some lady cut me off leaving the parking lot. <laughs> and I yelled out the window, you stupid bitch. You know, because I was pissed. And I said, stupid bitch, and Dr. Laura, come on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I had to listen to Dr. Laura all the way down to Spooner. Uh, Spooner. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Go and take on the day. She <laughs> should, really should be killed in a boating accident. That sucks like this whore. <laughs> uh, we got lots of phone calls coming in. Ellis in Philly. What's up, Ellis? Yo, man, this is the best guest you guys have had on ever. Yeah, he's great, man. It's the only <laughs> guest we've had on lately. No offense to Larry the Cable guy, but let's be honest here. Uh, it's not you. like the guests are pounding down the door to come on the new Opie and Anthony show yet. They should be. Yeah, all right. Yeah, they you. ought to be. They're good folks in here. You know, I was up in, I used to work up in Philly. Did you ever used to work at, a long time ago, at Funny Bone up on South Street? I think I did an open mic. I started in 1990, so I think oh, they okay. were kind of winding down by that time, early 90s. Yeah, they were, a spot there once. they were eating it then, yeah. I remember I opened up. It was me and Paula Poundstone in wow. 1987, I think. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that was when everyone, everyone was a stand-up comic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everybody in their system. Was she boy. touching kids uh, back then? No, she, <laughs> no, no, no. She diddled my butt a little bit. <laughs> she, she noodled me. <laughs> she, she punched in the face. Uh, she punched, she, me, she which, punched uh, me in the face and stuck definition? a finger in my hand. Which definition of the noodling did you get from Paul Downstone? <laughs> Hopefully the punching in the face. <laughs> well, I've been hearing your name like long before the Blue Collar Tour and that stuff. All of the club you hear you. Well, that's, that's Larry the Cable guy, and you were on the same circuit I was on, but for years you heard the name, and it was like, you know, in the Midwest and all these places, you were getting just getting huge. Yeah, I just, it, I love Blue Collar TV. It's, 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 you it's, guys it's took off. Oh, it's like, great. how long ago? About, because it really just took off. Yeah, well, we did that movie uh, about three years ago. Yeah. Well, two years ago, two and a half years ago, but we had been touring with it for three years. No kidding. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, arenas, right? Yeah, we did arenas, and it, you know, it's a credit to the fans because the fans just want to come out and laugh and have a good time, and I think that's the thing they could do with us because none of us cared about the PC stuff. We wanted to do what we thought was funny, right? And we wanted to do stuff that every day people come across, yeah, you know. And it was four out. different styles. You had Foxworthy, you had Angval, you had me, and you had Ron White, and all four of us are completely different. So you had something for everybody, so it was real good. Yeah. But the thing I liked about it was, of course, all the New York and L.A. critics, you know, if you don't have a gay character, you don't have a this or you don't have that, you're not a good show. Yep. Of course, Blue Collar TV, you know, we're just doing what we do. Of course, they all trashed it. Then the ratings came back through the roof. Bravo. And so, good. Then you don't hear nothing for from them. the critics. Anymore. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, a lot of calls from PA today. Rich, what's up? What's up, man? I just want to see if uh, Sensei, if he uh, searched uh, the cable guy. Oh, Master Poe? Did Master yeah, Poe search did. you? Oh, are, are you, you carrying? No, hell no, I ain't carrying. Uh-huh. <laughs> I left yeah. it in the cab. Yeah, Master, <laughs> <laughs> Mas- <laughs> Master Poe's our, uh, I don't know, he's, what is he? He's our, he's, he's security. He's, for he's the, an assassin, basically. Yeah. Well, he, well, he come up, he goes, will you fill this out for me, please? I'm like, oh, what the hell? Address, ID number, social security oh. number, take a picture. Do you know who he, <laughs> Noodle Master Poe, do you know who he is? 
Yes, I do. He's the biggest star we're going to ever get. Yes, I threw him up against the wall, though. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Did you make him fill out 30 minutes of paperwork like everyone else? No, no. We're... You treat him different than the sluts that come in here, right? Absolutely. He All made right. me French kiss him. Now, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't figure that part of it out. That's kind of a game. That's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's called lucky. <laughs> yeah, especially that thing that you're chewing. I don't know if I could handle that. <laughs> no, 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 I only got to have a dip in the morning. Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't know what dip's all about there, Master Paul? No, I don't I don't, partake you don't dip? in that. No, no. You like the dip there, right? Larry? Yeah, I do enjoy a good dip. Yeah. I tried to quit, but I can't. I say, Well, I started doing it a long time ago, and uh, but then I quit there for a while, and then I started gaining weight, and I said, you know what? I'm going to start dipping so I don't get fat. And then I started still eating so now i want to be fat with no teeth that was a real good decision on my part pretty soon i'll have a gay hey, you guy. want to blend in with your audience pretty I soon i have a gay guys looking at me going you know maybe we should just be friends <laughs> you know hey you been to hooters lately um but, but, we're not big hooters. there in a while yeah we're not big hooters we used fans. to go a couple we'll of tell years you why we, we think they gotta like get new uh outfits they're still wearing the 80s shorts. The orange yeah, but, 80s shorts. And they're getting shorter. I went in there, and I was like, man, if these shorts get any shorter, the FDA's going to start making these girls wear hair nets. <laughs> I, mean, cause, I mean, it's not sanitary. I was leaving. She goes, how was everything? I was, you know everything? <laughs> everything was good. <laughs> what the hell? I'm not a big fan of Hooters anymore. I went through the Hooters stage. Well, they're yeah. suing. Uh, what's that? Wing House? The Wing House in Florida opened up. Yeah. And they're competing with the Hooters called Wing House. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty good. I they got, uh, what, what are they got? Girls in it's better It's just the same outfits. as Hooters, but they got different. The, the girls are skankier, right? Different costumes. Yeah. yeah. That's what you need. Probably got the hot, uh, yeah, the hot outfits. I hate the shorts they wear in Hooters. They're like the old roller boogie movie yep. from the yeah. 70s. They yeah. all get the. And then they're the not shoes. really showing their legs. That's whatever, right? They wear those stockings, stockings that are like yeah. burlap. But Awful. I like it, Wayne House. You can actually get a blowjob and a macaroni salad. It's on the menu. <laughs> That's great. I can say macaroni salad on the radio. <laughs> you never used to be able to say macaroni salad. <laughs> you figured out this satellite radio, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, we have to get you out of here at 9, really? Well, what time is it? All right, we'll take a quick break. Uh, you can stay for a few I, more, right? No, I can stay for a while. I, we have to do that run-through for the roast at 10.30, so I'm supposed to be in the lobby at 10.00. All right, well, we'll take a break, and we'll continue with Larry the Cable Guy. The very worst of the Opie and Anthony F.U. line. Yeah, big F.U. to oh, that. Hey, you guys are killing me. I just got XM, and I've been here for seven years. Nothing works here. I haven't heard that in three years. I finally got it out of my head. You guys are going to start playing it again. Anyway, I want to leave a big fuck you to Howard Stern. $500 million fucking dollars. What the fuck? I hope Sears crashes and fucking burns and they have to pay Howard Stern all that money. Regardless, fuck him. XM Radio's number one and always will be. Yeah, I want to send a big fuck you to that fucking truck driver that called in this morning. You know, it's assholes like you that make the rest of us look bad. You know, we don't need your shit on the Opie and Anthony show. You're a fucking crackerhead. Shut up. Get behind the fucking wheel. Get on down the road. Take your fucking shower, you fucking stinky piece of shit. Shut up. Opie, this is Jason and Buffalo. Fuck you, bro. Don't even dream of giving Rich Voss a couple hours on high voltage or his listeners. I want the fucking replays. There's no way I'm getting up at 6 in the morning and listening to you assholes. I want to listen during the middle of the day, the middle of the night, whenever I want. Not when you're on, and then not have to listen to Voss during the day. Fuck you, bro. Do that. I'm canceling my subscription. Here comes Kenny. It's Club Soda Kenny. He's big Kenny. He's dumb and he's chuck full of cum. Here comes Kenny. Hey, this is a big fat fuck you to whichever one he retards does the fucking. Uh, yeah, shit. Maybe next time. Call the Opie and Anthony FU line at 1 866 FU line 1. 1 866 FU line 1. Oh, fuck you very much. We're back. We got Larry the Cable Guy in studio today. He's taping the Jeff Foxworthy roast tonight for Comedy Central. It will air in the future, obviously. 
Don't forget about Blue Collar TV on the WB Friday nights, right? 9.30? 9.30 Friday nights repeated uh, on Comedy Central Monday nights at 10. It's a great show if you haven't checked it out yet. The Blue Collar Comedy Tour rides again. That comes out on uh, DVD December 7th. Nice. Yeah, Good December Christmas show. present. Just in time for Christmas. And uh, really fast, uh, you were talking about the Wing House. It looks just like uh, Hooters with a different logo. Oh, it's the same thing. That is great, but the girls are really, really, uh, <laughs> it's like oh, really, really They're high. like higher supermodels in that place. You wow. think these girls are actually serving the wings? Come on now. <laughs> are they? Uh, yeah. There's some good Maybe looking. once a month they are, they're doing it just so they could. Uh, <laughs> there's some good looking. Wow, she's sure. a good one. Yeah, they're yeah. like supermodels. She's, but I still like Hooters, so who am I to say? All right. Nice, and I, I, I went to the bathroom, and I, I think I missed a couple good stories, because I, I walk in, and it's going, oh, my God, wow, what? Oh, well, huh? Larry's on the road all the time, so he does a lot of uh, radio. And uh, kind of did radio for years, I guess. Yeah, I started doing saying. radio in 1991. And, and you know uh, Ron from uh, Ron and Ron and now, oh yeah, uh, I started with Fez. I started with Ron and Ron. Yeah, they're yeah. good. Bo- they're good folks. Yeah, yeah, they're they're uh, good friends of ours. Yeah, Ron, of, Ron and Fez. Now the Ron and Fez version is really really funny but too. Talking about some people that just don't get it. In radio? Yeah, yeah. How about so, just about everyone? Well, I, call, I was telling him I called this guy the other day to do an interview on some country station. I remember where it was at, Indiana or something. Yeah. And I love doing my, my call-ins. And, and, uh, but every now and then you'll get one guy that's king of the small town. And, <laughs> oh, but he came on and he goes... Uh, uh, ninety nine froggy, you know, and, and he had that, and he had that voice, you know. He's like, but everything was a frog reference. Everything, <laughs> I mean, the froggy every, station. Yeah, he was like, it's yeah. one of those in PA too, man. But, but I call him and he goes, Larry, have you done a froggy station before? <laughs> and I said, Yeah, I've done several froggies. Well, my name's Happy John. We're having a happy day here at Froggy. Uh, we're in the swamp today. Uh, oh. Tadpole's gonna call us later. I'm like, Oh my god, you know, everything was about the frog. Oh, dude, I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. uh, and uh, then and he goes, "Hey, you're gonna be working where Dolly Parton was." And I go, "Yeah, I heard she uh, changed her name to Emerson Beggin, <laughs> like Emerson Drive, you know." And he goes, "Okay, let's stop this." Okay, we can't say that on the radio. Oh, and I go, man. you can't say Emerson Biggins? Oh, this is a very family-oriented program. And then he came and, and then he said it like that. This is a very family-oriented program. Hold on a second. Let's start again. Froggy Daddy! Oh, <laughs> oh, this guy's insane. <laughs> oh, you're okay. You're taping for. Yeah, oh, I got you. man. I, got you. I was like, you gotta be kidding. Me. That's hilarious. Emerson Biggins. He, he got he got pissed at that. <laughs> Emerson Biggins. Come on. I know it was insane. Should have gone on right at the right at the next one after he did his big intro and he goes to the guy. I guess cunts out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I go back. Well, there goes that bit. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Cunts only bad if you use it as an adverb. Really? Yep. <clears throat> Way to stop the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry's killing over here, and you had to do that. Just figured I'd chime in with a little uh, English language here. <laughs> a little English lesson. Thank you, Jimmy. Just completely remind people how bad it could be today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw that show for the first time. I don't get a lot of time to watch TV, but I was home for the holidays, and we was watching The Apprentice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, I think that's the dumbest show I've seen my whole I, life. I blew it off. I, I, didn't, I can't be bothered by that show. I mean, here's a game show, and first prize is a job. <laughs> now, who the hell wants to win a freaking job on a game? Put a washer and dryer on there, for God's sake. What's second That's a place? Great point. What's really second place? What's second place? Homework? <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. I like that. But I did hear, though, the last show, the big finale, Donald Trump's going to get his hair imploded. <laughs> so uh, we'll be looking forward to that. For, I now, what show we like? Week. We like The Swan. Uh, Have you seen The Swan? I've never seen The Do Swan. Do cosmetic surgery on these uh, freaks in nature. Uh, they get these women in, they and they're all they all have mental problems. They were abused. They, they all have some, up, yeah. and they have some horrendous problem. One woman uh, last week, no teeth. She lost all her teeth at 25 years old. So she's crying, and it's not due to an accident or anything like that. It's just a lazy brother that didn't want to brush her teeth. So uh, she <laughs> she popped her teeth out, and they talk about what they're going to do to them uh, through the whole show. And at the end, they parade them out, and they all make them just look like strippers, like cheap. Bubble-headed, blonde, big-titted strippers, and it's great to get these women that have no no self-confidence whatsoever. They've been abused. They're crying through half of the episode, and then ask them what size tits they want, because they just think that the bigger the tits, the better they're going to feel about themselves. The right. better guys are going to treat them, and they all wind up coming in uh, for the big reveal at the end with just these gigantuan ribs. Yeah, they make tits. them all look like strippers, basically. Yeah. 
Big blonde head. With the collagen in their lips. It's a great show. You Face just watch lifts, brow lifts, uh, liposuction. I it's unbelievable the what they now. do to these girls. And that is going to make men treat them better, though. That's actually a very accurate It absolutely process. does make men treat them better because they're just slobs when they start. You can just watch the first five minutes, watch their sob story, and then watch the last five minutes. The rest of the show is all bullshit. <laughs> and, and my sister lost cancer and I lost my third child. I need some tips. <laughs> <laughs> it just make things That's so much it. better. That's exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the show. I'm getting a divorce. Uh, my brother lost seven pounds in seven minutes. Seven pounds in seven That's minutes. Right. He flossed his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bing. Yeah, we need, we need a drum That's what's drum. getting me on a big show, Norton. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Cunt is an adverb. Back after this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to be a little smarter with your comedy, like Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, yeah right? That's real handy right there. Now, what's the uh, what, what's the Cable Guy story? Oh, when I first started doing call-ins, uh, uh, the, I was doing a, a you, you, cable installer yeah. on stage. And my buddy Ron said, uh, man, that's funny. you got to call the morning show, and you got to do that. I mean, that's funny. We need some characters on there. And I said, I, all right, I'll give you a holler. And, but I can't just, I can't, what am I just going to call up and start bitching about politics? I've got to have a reason to call up. And, uh, well, I guess they're waiting on the cable guy to call for a couple of days, and he never did. So I, since I was doing a cable installer, we, I just called up as a cable guy. And uh, the name people were just like, man, that was funny. Of course, they called me. They said, who's this? And I said, it's Larry. And they said, uh, Larry, uh -huh. yeah, the cable guy. And they, oh, we've been waiting <laughs> yeah. on you. And so then we riffed into some bits. And people are like, man, that's funny. That Larry the Cable guy, was that a real guy or is that? Of course, we told everybody it was a real guy that called. Yeah. And it just kind of stuck. And I was just started being known as Larry the Cable guy. And then I started getting on more stations. And so I just toured as Larry so then, the Cable guy. Then you guy. can't change it after so uh, so Right. Well, people, people, people kind of know you by Yeah, it. people know me by well, that Well, that's now, my so. problem. Opie, I hate the name. but uh, <laughs> He's got to go around I'm stuck Opie with Opie now forever. Yeah, hey, a guy when I was 12. If it worked, it worked do. for a couple of years. It get, I don't know. I don't know. What is a great me. nickname for a kid? Right. It's not <laughs> a, a radio red name. Kid. It's not a radio name. Right. It was a stupid name I got when I was twelve. I'm stuck with it, and uh, I truly want to change my name for the radio. But now we've been doing this for ten years. I can't. Well, yeah, well, you're both millionaires, so your nicknames are working out very nicely. <laughs> well, well, they wrong. could call me Jim the Tommy Morrison's blood sample. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'll> be... <laughs> well, hey, a little more clever. <laughs> <laughs> see, I didn't go with the <laughs> Arthur Ashe or Magic Johnson. <laughs> people would recognize you. As, uh, <laughs> Let's go see the blood sample. He's down here. <laughs> now, you call, like, hundreds of stations. I, I was up to 20, I think, I think there was a time we were trying to get you when we were up in Boston, but oh, oh, it just didn't work out because you, you were calling. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I was up to 20, Every morning you just wake up wow. and just one after another, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, six to 11 every morning. But it's it like was fun. I, I enjoyed it. It was a good time. Met a lot of nice people. And, yeah. But you'd set these up like a week in advance, right? No, you had, boom, you know, yeah, these Tuesday, had, these Wednesday. I, I knew who I was going to call, what times I was going to call. But, you know, all the stations I called, the majority of them, just great guys. I mean, we all got along. And so it was fun. It was more mm -hmm. fun than was, there was never really a station you'd call and go, man, I hate calling these freaking morons, right. you know. Yeah. So it was all it was all real good. They yeah, were good to me. Yeah. Oof. What about uh, you doing the Foxworthy roast? Yeah, we're doing the roast on it. That ought to be pretty fun, you know, because I'm kind of like. What are you going to bash him about? Anything? Or? <laughs> yeah, give us a give us a little preview. No, give us one, two. Uh, I think I say one thing in there where I go, uh, Jeff Foxworthy's show. Oh, he was once called the worst actor ever in a sitcom. And that was at the same time that the retard Corky from Life Goes On was out. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, you're really bad if you're not even better than crippled actors. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's funny. <laughs> Christopher Reeve was watching his show and actually got up and turned the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably get shit on that. But it's ah, funny, funny, funny. Right? Screw it. That's Go with funny. it. Are you kidding? <laughs> There's a good lineup tonight, too. It's you. It's, it's all the guys from the Blue Collar Tour? Yeah, it's me, Bill, Ron. It's going to be uh, uh, Nick DiPaolo, yep. who's one of my favorite comedian of all time. Nick. Angry Nick. Nick's great. And then, uh, you know, DeCastro. Colin, I think. And Colin's in there. And, and, uh, and uh, oh, Dennis Leary. Okay. <clears throat> so there's, wow. there's a few of them in there. Hell yeah. You got some ringers. We're supposed to go to that. 
Well, we can't go out we can't, anymore. But we can't go out. It's goddamn morning radio. We have to yeah. get up at four. Yeah, you got to go to bed seven. Let's by six thirty. I, I try to night, stretch it to eight, but you're kind of right. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, it's just about bedtime. Are the tickets available for that tonight, or is it sold out? Uh, I think it's sold out tonight. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, they yeah. got looked like all them tables had name places on them, so <laughs> I think they pretty much sold out. <laughs> all right, uh, Larry in Texas. What's up, Larry? <laughs> Not too much, man. Good morning, O and A. How Love are you? Sweetie. Hi, Mister. Uh, uh, I just got a quick question, or actually two of them. One, real quick. Uh, what is a roast? I'm not too familiar with the uh, the comedian language. So it's where you stick roast? your tongue up somebody's ass, <laughs> 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 in the and then you put your fist in the catfish. <laughs> oh shit! All right. Second question. <laughs> No, a roast is where you just the whoever the celebrity's getting roasted. You just kill them. That you just go up and you just uh, tell them. jokes about them. That's basically it. It's like the old. Do you ever see the old Dean Martin roast or the old Milton Berle roast? Oh yeah, the yeah. Classics. It's just like that. Those and they're pretty vicious too. A lot of them. They yeah, they get vicious because it's all comedians oh, shitting right. on each other, and comedians are vicious to each other. So they're really roasts are very funny. You'll probably hear the word oh. cock somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Second question, Larry the Cable Guy and for Jimmy Norton. Are y'all going to be doing any shows down in the Houston area in, in the near future? Oh, my God. Well, I'm at the Houston I mean, Improv. I'm a truck driver. I'm a truck driver, and the only time I can really get to places to see you guys is if, when I'm at home. I'm at the Houston Improv in January, and I think Larry will be doing the Astrodome sometime right after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> That's really kind of hard. That's really hard to the <laughs> actually, no, but actually, I'm taping my new live album January 14th and 15th at the Verizon Wireless Theater down there. Is that in Houston? Ooh. In Houston. If you tell me that's when I'm in Houston and I have to compete with him, I'm going to fucking smash my agent right in the mouth. <laughs> I look at Norton. He's checking right now. Checking he's, like not even, he's not even going to wait for the commercial break. All right. Thank hey, you, Larry. Appreciate All you, Larry. Right. Hey. All right. Hey, Angel Eyes. No, you're not going to get him, bro. No, I, I might be there in uh, no, February. Quick, when what? you go to Houston, uh, where are you going to be uh, uh, appearing at? Last week, what's that? When you go to Houston, where are you going to be uh, on stage at? Last week of January, I'm in, uh, it's, I believe, the Houston Improv. Oh, the Houston Improv? Yes. Can we talk about uh, uh, Houston comedy clubs a little more, please? See what I said? Uh, Hold the, on, what's that, sir? The truckers love to talk. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, it's not that I would love to talk. It's just I'm trying to get information so I can take my girl there to. to, to well, to well, uh, Norton's got a Larry. Oh my God, Norton! Norton's got a website. Truck, trucker time's up. All right, trucker time's up. <laughs> the alarm. Eataballet.com, sir. That's my website. You can go, but the, yeah, I'll be there. Thank God. Two weeks after, after Larry. All right. Is he driving a crank truck? I don't know what the <laughs> hell was going on there. They love the crystal meth. They love to talk, and they love killing hookers and throwing them on the side of the road. That's pretty much the uh, the trucker credo. <laughs> yeah, we had, we're starting to learn about the truckers. That's about it, right? I a little love too the much. Truckers. God bless and, the and truckers. And the uh, the uh, I keep saying lounge lizards. The, uh, lot, the lot lizards. lizards. <laughs> yeah, the lot lizards. Yeah, they have the lot lizards. The chicks, the uh, scabby chicks that uh, walk around the the truck stops. Yeah, there's and a have few sex of with them. the guys. There's a few of them down there, but the, you don't want to touch them. No, yeah, it was funny one time I was leaving a. This is about four years ago. I'm leaving a show I did in Jacksonville, and I'm driving my truck. I got a big old Dodge on a 12 inch with 38, 15, 40 Mickeys on it. So I'm driving. I got my CB in there. I'm driving down, and, and one trucker told a joke to another trucker. So I got on there and. I did a joke and they laughed, and I did another joke and they laughed. I did like five minutes of my routine, <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, there's a, one truck going, "Come on, keep it coming, boy!" And the other one goes, "Yeah, come on, let's hear some more." So the whole way home, man, I did my act the whole way home on the damn CV. <laughs> CV. Oh, they dude, had no was, idea it was oh, you. It was that's, great. That's great. Uh, do you know what these are? Oh, yeah. Some, We're still trying to figure this crap out. Sent us these, and some people say it's pretty popular in the Midwest and South. Oh, bull, uh, plastic bull nuts. Yeah, you put them on your back, uh, back of your truck there. See, he knows. Matter of fact, but if you why? got a pair, I could use one of them. Oh, you could do Would you like the tan <laughs> one? You know, I'd like the flesh cutter. Yeah, give, give, yeah. give them the flesh Flesh cutter bull nuts for my truck. God bless you. You put them on the back of your truck? Boy, well, why? This, this why? is the best Christmas ever. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. That's so your truck has balls. No, I was down in Tulsa. We had a bull nut fry down in Tulsa. Really? Yeah, my buddy. My best friend lives down there in South Carolina. Now, is there any reason to eat those? They are unbelievably good. Yeah, you, you go, can't get out of your you head go, what they are. You go to a bull nut fry 
I'm telling you, you will not eat anything better than bull nuts. Really? Oh, they taste better than a cheerleader on game day. These, <laughs> these bull nuts. What do they taste like? Chicken? That's what everyone says. Well, yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I mean, but they're just good. You put little sauces on. We them. almost did that on the show. Oh, just to I've try seen it. people cook them. They slice them real thin and kind of. Yeah, you don't want to eat them in their natural form, <laughs> like an apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a pair of nuts <laughs> on a piece of bread. <laughs> 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 Fair enough, it's on piece of bread, by God. So fresh, the bull goes, ow, and you bite down on it. And yeah. the penis fingers are good, too, if you've ever had the penis fingers. There's just so much that is edible on a steer that by the time you get to the nuts, I think I'm full. Yeah. You know, I'll take, I'll take the worst cut of steak there is. You know? Eat the grizzle, even. Yeah, I'll eat the grizzle. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> like you're foraging off a squirrel for something. There's plenty of meat there. No, thank you. But put him on the truck. Sure. <laughs> hey, Larry likes that one a lot. Eh? Oh, God dang, that's funny. <laughs> All right. That's funny to watch a midget run track right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. My brother, he wanted me to help him name his bowling team the other day. Yep. He's got a bowling team. And he came up with, uh, what did he come up with? His was the Lane Brains. Lane Brains? And right. I said, why don't you name them the I Ain't Got Nothing Else to Do on a Friday Eithers? <laughs> I think, eithers. <laughs> he ain't a good bowler. I went to watch him bowl last Wednesday, and I caught a ball. <laughs> Our own Steve did that. Uh, Steve threw one off the wall last time we played. <laughs> Yeah, but he likes to drink a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he likes his martinis. That's why we call him Martini Steve. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink anymore. I used to drink, but the neighbors got up a petition. <laughs> you know, and I don't care what they say. I still say them puppies don't look nothing like me. <laughs> that was a rough night that night, <laughs> Jimmy. You know what I'm talking. About. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, a couple more calls and we'll get you out of here. Dwayne from Nebraska, what's up? Oh. Huskers. Not much. What's going on, guys? Go Huskers. Yeah, man. That's what I was going to call you about. What do you think of those guys this year, huh? First losing season since 1961. I'm a big Nebraska Cornhusker fan, uh -huh. and uh, that, I've never been alive when they've had a losing team in five yeah, and six. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm 28. Really? Always been, <laughs> always been going to a ball game or something like that. It's yeah, that streak, the national streak ended. Nebraska's the only team. They had the streak 38 straight years going wow. to bowl games, and they're not yeah. going this year for the first time. Didn't they one year, yeah. I'm not a college football fan, but didn't they one year have a big record, and they were going for the win instead of just taking the tie, and the guy dropped the two-point yeah. conversion in the end zone? I think that's my only college football memories watching Look Nebraska at you. blow it. Right. Year, like, yeah, um, a few years ago. That, you know what? And he did, and Tom Osborne did that, and I always give we in Nebraska always give him credit for that because you know, a lot of those teams back when they were doing that they would kick the extra point because if you're the number one team in the country you're not beat and you're the only undefeated team you're going to win the national championship. Well, yeah. We were playing Miami, and we're the only undefeated <clears throat> team in the country, and we tied it up and with just a few seconds to go in the game, and instead of kicking that extra point to to win the title, we went for two. We said, we're going to win it. We're going to win it outright. And, of course, we didn't get it. But, uh, oh, Osborne had some nuts. Wait, and that? then I ate them on a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> on Wonder Bread. <laughs> yeah, but, no, they'll get, hey, they'll get better. Keep the faith. All right, Dave and Maine. Wait, hey, wait, wait, one more question for me. Go, go, go. Would that have tied it, or would that have won the game? That would have won the game. The extra point would have tied it, The extra right? point would have tied it, and they'd have won the national title. Oh, but, the extra point would have tied it. But they, but they went okay. for two. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But I used to, I never played football when I was in high school. I was a big dude, and I was in the band. And everybody called me really? a sissy little fag, you know. But I love the baton. I got to tell you, <laughs> I've always been a fan of the little tights and the camel toes. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, Dave in Maine. Hey, Dave. Hey, how you guys doing? We're hanging with Larry uh, the Cable Guy. Uh, hey, uh, you guys are you guys rock. Hey, but uh, I know you're having trouble saying a lot, lizard. You got so 80s. You got to be politically correct now. They're, they are sleeper creepers. Sleeper creepers. Okay. That's right. Mm. We're still learning. We're learning every day about uh, you guys. So. All right. Well, you guys rock. All right. Thank you. Yeah, bye. This bye, is fella. service for everything. And John in Tulsa. What's up, John? Hey, what's going on, guys? You tell I'm us. Just... Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you, you need to... Uh... Get him a bull dick cane to go along with those bull nuts you got. A bull dick chain? What the hell's that? Yeah. Now that I haven't seen. 
you never seen a bull's dick cane? You oh, a cane. All over, yeah. Texas. Oh, a cane. I've I thought you that. said a chain. No, I've uh, no, I've, I've <laughs> I have seen the cane. It's actually they take the bull penis and they stretch it out and dry it out and make a cane out a of cane. it. A cane. Am wow. I correct, sir? Oh, uh, he's gone. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. And they stretch it out and make a cane out of it. Yeah. Bull dick chain. You need Ugh. that? No. Hey, well, you don't want to look too uppity for the women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. I mean, you want to make them think you got money, but that's a little overdoing it. That is over the top. That's over the top. I went to my Talladega this year. Yeah. And uh, I got an up-close look at the Viagra car. Did you know Viagra car is the only car that has windshield wipers on the inside? <laughs> I didn't know that, but when I was up there, I did. <laughs> I don't get the racing either. <laughs> I got a buddy of mine's an auction. You don't get racing? I don't get it. Oh, man. NASCAR My brother is like gets the it. greatest sport of all time. My brother lived in uh, Daytona for like seven, eight years. He gets it. He tries to explain to me. I don't get it. I watch for the crashes, which is the obvious thing to say, but that's why I watch. It's the greatest sport of all time. And I was pissed off when they fined Earnhardt for cussing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's NASCAR. I mean, that's yeah. not political. You can't cuss in NASCAR. I mean, what nation? And he was cursing on the radio as he's uh, racing, right? Yeah, it's like, man, what nation? You can't cuss in the pool, or you can't pee in the pool during synchronized swimming? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> what did like, he say? Shit. Oh, okay. But he right. won. He was all excited, and he didn't mean to do it. And, of course, they find him, you know. Ah. It's crazy. I always thought that uh, State Free Mini Pads ought to do NASCAR, mm -hmm. just for the announcing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful summer's eve here. <laughs> one, one lap in, we already got a red flag. <laughs> the KY Jelly Car has just accelerated and easily slipped into the number two hole. <laughs> the Vagisil Car has been itching and burning rubber all season out there. And is number one in the bush standings. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jeff Gordon, the number 24 Strawberry Dew Chevy Monte Carlo. <laughs> hey, you don't see many of those fun. You don't shits, see them. Uh, How'd you get tickets to the Tampon 200? Well, we pulled some strings. <laughs> <laughs> we got some seats. But, yeah, I'm a big NASCAR fan. I had a guy say to me one time, oh, NASCAR ain't nothing but a bunch of mullet-headed rednecks drinking bush beer all day watching cars go around in a circle. And I was like, you know what? It's a lot more than that, buddy. All right? We also got Budweiser. <laughs> 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 so he was way off. I used to watch years ago when it was like uh, Earnhardt and um, what the hell else? Wall Trip used to be every yeah. year just banging heads with each other, and yeah. that was entertaining. You know, I used to watch that, but then I I kind of got out of it when a lot, a lot of the old timers retired. Yeah, I was died. always a Dick Trickle fan. Dick Trickle, yeah. yeah he was my favorite. I had always a, got a little chuckle when they had to say his name. Love Trickle. I always <laughs> had a sticker on my truck that said, Racing makes my Dick Trickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was all, but you know, he won one race, and he's from Wisconsin. He's from the La Crosse area. That's where my cousins live, so they got that bit. He's the grass, you know. And he got interviewed after the race, and now I know why they never did interviews with Dick Trickle. Oh, really? He was the, this is basically the whole interview. Dick, you finally got you an NASCAR win. What do you think? Well, I tell you, Cora, Cora, you know, and my wife was over, and, and I go, I know what he's coming around the side, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not kidding. It was like that. I'd like to hear him and Ward Burton in a conversation one time. You know, hey, where are you? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, Ward Burton, he's one of them guys who don't move his lips when he talks, you know. Very good. Yeah, I'm a big racing fan. Who's Ward Burton? Is he a, a racer? He's a race car driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Danny in Jersey. Hey. Hey, hey guys. How you doing? Good. Hi, fella. What's, up? What's up, Jimmy? Hi. Hey, I wanted to say, uh, you know what NASCAR stands for? What? Non-accepted sports centered around rednecks. Punch it out, Maverick. I'll kick your <laughs> ass, son, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll I'll shove a milk bone down your throat and stick a hungry dog up your ass. What <laughs> <I do. laughs> Let's go to Chattanooga. Cooper. Chattanooga. <laughs> What's up, guys? How are you? Oh, not too bad. Hey, uh, Larry Cable Guy, man. You got a uh, guy down there, you ever seen him with a coon dick toothpick? Now that, I will say, I do not know what a coon, coon dick, dick toothpick. toothpick. A coon dick toothpick. I used to work with a guy from Lynchburg, and he carried that. He hooked it on the end of his keychain. It was a bone that's in a raccoon's dick. And I swear to God, this fucker picked his teeth with it. <laughs> oh, a raccoon. I misunderstood that. Yeah, they, they, oh, oh. they actually have bones in their penis, yeah. No, I've heard that. Sausage All right, Jimmy the Greek. Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> raccoons are bred, so their cocks can be used as canes. <laughs> you know, they got a bone in their penis. <laughs> they do? <laughs> Jeepers. 
<laughs> well, that's a nice. You're story. talking about the raccoon. <laughs> that's a wonderful story. <laughs> Fantastic. How I, about that? I was down in Texas not long ago, and and they they are having uh, they can call up if if I'm wrong, but they were trying to get rid of the phrase "Remember the Alamo." Really? Out of the Texas school. Isn't this ridiculous? Out of the Texas school system. And why? What was their reason? They said it's offensive to Mexicans. Remember the Alamo. And I'm thinking to myself, well, didn't they win that war? <laughs> I think they kicked some ass there. Yeah. You would think the offensive phrase would be, remember the ass kicking the Mexicans got after the Alamo <laughs> would be the offensive <laughs> phrase. You'd think they'd run around saying, remember the Alamo all the time. They kick ass. That was the win. That's the first thing they won since they knocked Puerto Rico out of the Olympics in soccer three years ago. I mean, good God. They want to keep that phrase. <laughs> what else can't you do now in school? You can't say God in anything. I'm not a religious guy, but it's like they want to remove God from any of the... Uh, you, like, you could talk about certain things in class, but you can't talk about certain parts of the Constitution or the Bill of Rights that have God that in have it. That have God in it. Yeah, yeah, I heard that the other God, day. God, the left is so irritating. They really are irritating. It's like Meathead from All in the Family. That's who's running, or, you know, the country. Meathead. Rob meathead. Ryan. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And he's like that in real life, too. He's the one that, that started the whole non-smoking thing in L.A. He loves being called Meathead, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's sure. right. Yeah, All I'm the sure. work he's done afterwards. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Meathead! Yeah. yeah. It, it's we a, have the Meathead thing? we got to play that going. No matter how hard you work, you're still just a Pollock sidekick to us, stupid. <laughs> 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 we got to get the retard to making Meathead, meathead uh, sing the song. Well, All you know, if, if, yeah. if I always say, if more people stood up, and said enough is enough, that shit would stop happening. But everybody's scared to say anything. I mean, People are scared to say stuff, or they just live their lives. People have lives to lead. They have jobs to go exactly. to. They're not like the Hollywood elite that has plenty of time to do all this stuff that they uh, find right. the time to do. Bitching about everything and uh, deciding how we should all lead our lives. Yeah, but the people going to work 9 to 5 with three or four kids, you know, mm -hmm. they, they don't have a say in it. Because, yeah, they don't have the time to sit exactly. there and write the letters, and they don't have a, a, a TV show to go on and, and spout the crap that you hear coming out of these people. I think it's ridiculous. Pat Sajak wrote, actually wrote oh, an article. Oh, I read that one. It's about Hollywood and how disgustingly, uh, you know, uh, agenda-obsessed they are. And it's about the Dutch filmmaker who was killed right. for offending Muslims. Can you imagine in this country if a filmmaker was killed uh, over something he did on abortion? If an abortion, uh, anti-abortion activist shot him and killed mm -hmm. him? The outrage from Hollywood, but because it involves Islam, mm -hmm. they, they don't say anything. And this is one of their own who was killed. Yeah, and and gonna shut up Pat Sajak, I can't believe I'm saying, and Pat Sajak was saying... Yeah, whenever you point him out as a poignant source... I know, <laughs> I was disgusted reading it. I had to keep going to the top of the uh, article going, Pat Sajak, the Wheel of Fortune guy? Because he was making complete sense. Right, and he was talking about that and how this guy, this filmmaker, was killed because uh, he uh, did a film about uh, Muslims and how they treat their women. Abused and, them, yeah. And some guy, you know, <clears throat> killed him and well, left nobody, a note, yeah, uh, stabbed into his chest, slit the guy's throat. I mean, really worked him over. That guy was trying to send a message. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to read <laughs> too much into it. No, be a psychiatrist over there. Get <laughs> <laughs> these people out, can't you? <laughs> But if it happened over abortion, you can bet every every fucking liberal. Hollywood filmmaker mm -hmm. would be screaming about it in the press, but because it's Islam and they don't want yeah. to be seen like they're agreeing with George he, Bush on anything. That was the point uh, he yep. brought up. He goes, he goes, who wouldn't be outraged at this? It, they don't want to say anything, not because they're not outraged by it, but because they they don't want to align themselves with the president or his policy on uh, Iraq or anything. And it, it wouldn't be. Of course, it's not. just you know a filmmaker was killed uh, because of a film he made. You know, let that outrage you. Don't be so scared that people are going to go, oh, you're knocking Islam and Muslims. Uh, you must uh, uh, be aligned with President Bush. No, but they are such pussies over oh, there. Yeah, Just... they totally are. <laughs> and and that's the thing. I mean, it's unbelievable. You, you can make, that's the point I always make. You can make fun of born-again Christians in Hollywood as much as you want. It's a, But it wasn't Baptist preachers flying planes in the buildings. Right. Yeah. You make fun of a Muslim. Oh, you're an asshole. You're yeah. a bigot. But, oh, go ahead and make fun of anybody else. But don't make fun of them. The, they're the yeah. ones flying a damn plane. Yep. Oh, but it's I can not all of them. I figure that out. Yeah. Well, it's not all of well, It's all of them I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Know. Colin had a great line of tough crowd to talk about Islam. He goes, look, you can't let a few million bad apples Spoil the punch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, that made me laugh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's totally insane. I mean, and and, and uh, that's why I like getting on stage and trying to encourage just 
regular folks, hey, if people started speaking up and said, hey, yep. enough of this bullshit, it'd stop, you know, especially yeah. in that schools taking God. People wouldn't want that to happen, but they don't say nothing. Right? And you're exactly right, because they ain't got time to say something. They don't have time. It. People are busy. They're trying to live their lives. They're, they're not writing things and, and protesting and getting out. It's the people that have no life or this elite Hollywood that from their gated houses oh, think right. they know exactly what the common man is thinking and what they should be doing and how they should treat other people. And, and right. they know nothing. I, I, you ever lo- go on to uh, Barbara Streisand's webpage and read oh. her words of wisdom she writes every week or every <laughs> month or so? I read this, and it's, I swear to God, it's like watching Mars Attacks. Those act, act, act. It's, they made more sense we should than get, reading this Barbara We should get that read it on the air. Oh, we should. Yeah. Show how ridiculous She's an it irrelevant, is. elitist bag of meat. She's done nothing, nothing good since Nuts. That's the last good project she was involved with, where she played a hooker, which is exactly what she should be doing, <laughs> jabbing that fucking awful Flintstones record player nose into your stomach while she sucks a <laughs> cock. A liberal whore. God, she makes me nauseous. <laughs> My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Oh, we need some God, of that. I agree with Jimmy Norton oh. on that. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> well, they caught her out knows. there. They caught her out there talking about, like, she was talking about how, like, her, uh, about saving energy or something. And her apartments, even when she's out of the country, have to be air conditioned to, like, 60 sure. degrees. Sure. And, and then her, her spokesman actually said, well, Barbara, like, that applies to other people, but not her. She, they actually came out and said that because the inconsistency yeah. had been caught. And the ones that uh, hop on the bandwagon for PETA, that terrorist organization uh, that tries to save animals. They're awful. They, uh, they hop on the bandwagon about how bad it is, and you won't catch them without their leather boots on. Right. And why, why is leather okay, then? How about if you're going to uh, uh, tell people they can't eat meat and throw uh, paint on fur coats... Uh, how about you don't wear anything that has anything to do with an animal? You'll look like shit every day. Your makeup, everything. I agree, and I'll tell you something else. That's why you take a tour bus everywhere, because I'm not putting up with that crap at the airport anymore. I yeah. mean, until they start, uh, until they start, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Profiling. Yeah. Profiling. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's it, because that's what they do in Israel. They profile. Oh, yeah. But we can't do it here because we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. I'm sick and tired of waiting. Now you got to take your jacket off. you mm-hmm. got to take this off. I went through the other day to save time. I went through and nothing but a pair of Speedos. <laughs> and they still pulled me out of the line and accused me of smuggling in a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that? Oh, no, we're giving the phone. But they funny. they will let they will let X amount. They will only have certain amount of guys. If they if they see ten Arabic guys going through, and I mean obviously not all Arabic guys are terrorists. But those are the, if you were to look at an eighty year old lady, why yeah. you're wasting time and resources checking over uh, old women from the south, uh, you know kids, things like that. And then yeah, if you see some uh, Arab gentlemen, some Middle Eastern gentlemen come by, check them. Right. Why? Look at the past record. You could pretty much tell who the guys are that might be pulling some shenanigans on airplanes. I remember I was flying like the day you could fly after 9-11, mm-hmm. and I'm going to Houston, Texas. All right, I got my buckle on. I'm going down there at the, fer- the rodeo down there, and I got my buckle on. I got my cowboy hat, and there's another dude going down there, too. He's about four behind me, and they were going out of their way so they wouldn't offend these folks. Don't and, offend. And there was four Middle Eastern dudes all in the age of 25 to 30. Oh, the real American-hating age with, bracket. D- yeah. Couldn't speak only with carry-ons right on the plane. And they pulled me and the other dude out of the line to search us. And I, and oh, I, kinda, I got in trouble. I go, this is bullshit. And, of course, the security, what's the real problem here? And I said, you just let four Middle Eastern dudes on the plane with carry-ons and you're going to pull us out of the line, dressed like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? <laughs> and you're going to let them? I go, this is ridiculous. Well, it's just random. Bullshit. Random. random well, head. don't make it random. But people are so afraid yep. of offending. Like you said, don't offend. How about we start offending a little bit? When you're looking for mobsters, do you talk to Jews or blacks? No, you look for Italians. When you want the Westies, you look for Irish in Hell's Kitchen. It's like, that's who you're looking for right now. Sorry, we're not the ones that told you to fucking hijack planes. It's now called Clinton. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, it is actually much nicer. Well, no, they they just don't like the name Hell's Kitchen anymore. Well, I like... It doesn't help the real estate. (laughs) Right. And it's well, only in America that they're having problems with Islam. I mean, it's not every other little corner of the world. You know, uh, it's yeah, anywhere else. Exactly. Not, in, not in India or, you know, anywhere else. It's or, only 98% of every trouble ever happening in the uh, world. It's them. Yeah, but. you know, the Chechens, they're not Arab. It's just it's the religion. It's violent. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Are they having problems at the North Pole yet? Have they reached there yet with their terrorism? 
It'll hit there sooner or later. The Eskimos, them some bitches. You really don't pick your heads, too. <laughs> All right, we should get Larry out of here. You got things to do, Larry. Larry, thank you. Are you going to come so back? Much? I, did, did you, you have fun? I love y'all. I've heard about you for a long time and listened to you on X. Yeah, we got a bad rap. It was nice to have you know what that we did get a bad rap. Yeah, you, you a told few me. stupid DJs ruin it for everybody <laughs> with their terrorist acts. Yeah, no, I hear yeah. you. It's insane, but no, I appreciate you. I mean, I had a great time. Great, Jimmy man. was good to see old Jimmy Norton. Thank oh, you, Jimmy. always is cool. This is and this is before you go. The thing I love about these guys is that. The industry uh, never would have given you guys anything because you're not what they're looking. You know how they look for these fucking elitist, unfunny comics, but their following got so big that they couldn't ignore and them they anymore. Had to, yeah. They couldn't ignore you guys, and, right. and now you got a hit show. It's fucking great, man. It's yeah, fantastic. It's a, yeah, and that's a tribute to the fans, and it, it, you know, we just got great fans. I, everywhere I go, I always thank the fans. You know, because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. But the truckers out there listening, and uh, I love y'all to death, and uh, thanks for having me on. I hope you Anthony kick ass, by God. All That's right. where they roast tonight. Queer, yeah. queer or not, y'all good folks. <laughs> <I'll tell> you. <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> Are you insane? Queer. He has no idea. We've been trying to get the gay out of this show for the last three weeks, and he just oh. ruined it with that. <laughs> you ass. Oh, sorry. Jimmy gonna have to bring some gay in. Yeah, we're going to have well. hot chicks here Friday, and we're going to be throwing darts at their uh, a-holes. Oh, Cherry. damn. Are you All serious? Right? Yeah, come back Friday. Uh, you know what? Let me <laughs> pencil that. <laughs> schedule, what, yeah. what else do you want us to plug here? You got the Blue Collar Comedy Tour Rise Again DVD coming out December 7th. The show's on uh, the WB Friday nights at 9.30. Anything else? Uh, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we have uh, just that DVD. Uh, okay. The CD's out now. The Blue Collar CD's out now in Walmart. I have a Larry the Cable Guy Get Her Done DVD. Get Her Done. And you can get my Get Her Done <laughs> shirts at uh, Walmart, J.C. Penney, and Bass Pro Shops. <laughs> and Larry the Cable Guy dot com. There. You can get some on there. All right, let's get them out of here. It's Larry the Cable Guy. And as we go to break, uh, in honor of the next 20 minutes, a nice little song from Team America. America, fuck yeah. Ah, there you go. Get her done. America, America. America, fuck yeah. Come out of here to save the motherfucking day. Yeah, America, fuck yeah. Freedom is the only way. Yeah. Terrorists, your game is through. Cause now you have to. Jim Norton sings. Forget me not, you sightless taunt. Your dog just shit on my rug. Thought that was pretty fucking funny, didn't you? How's that for a sketch? The Obi and Anthony Show. You don't do sketches, stupid. I was walking down the street, and some construction guy was shouting at me. Hey, show me your cans. So I did. And he plummeted 17 floors and was impaled on a forklift. But my tits look great. Please, wow responsibly. A public service announcement of the Opie and Anthony Show. It's the O&A virus. <laughs>